What's up guys, Tugi here, back again. This is Borks Battalion on NHL 17 and Hockey Ultimate Team. And in this episode, after winning both of our games in the prior episode, and with the help of a disconnect, the rage quit, call it what you will, we won the Division 9 title. And of course, we now have the help of the Christmas set reward packs. So this team has drastically changed. And of course, going along, with the top comment of the last episode. Now, there were a lot of options. A lot of uh, comments were kind of tied. So I went with the best option for this team at the moment, and that would be Max Pacioretty. I had the option of him, uh, Joe Thornton, Phil Kessel. We went with Max Pacioretty, and I am really excited. We could run him on the top line. I am really excited to see what he'll do with Johansson and Okposo. That is just a beat you into the dirt kind of line. Anyway, speaking of the lines, we do have a ton of combinations that we could potentially use. We really do. We could run Bissonnette on defense, and that would put Austin Matthews as our top line left winger. You know, we could get Brian Little in for Konechny, although I really do like that Konechny card. And then defensively, Shea Weber's our only right-handed defenseman. So it's just, it's it's tough to know what to really go with right now. All I know is I am keeping Mata and Yoki Pocket into the lineup to keep defensively responsible, activated on Bork. That little bit of a stick checking boost is pretty good for him. But this is the lineup. Of course, Martin Jones is still our goaltender. Let's get into this. Our first two games of Division 8. What can we do with by far the best team we have had yet? First possession. The Bruins organizing back in their own end. Mike Richards immediately. Am I going to pull off here? I don't want that chance. I don't want him to quit. We've had a first minute quit before. But holy shit, is this Mike Richards quick. And he oh, yeah, just missed. That wasn't English. I'd love to play that sound back. Bissonette has a chance for his first goal. And Henrik Lundqvist gets the save. Artemi Panarin, what a move, and he buries it, the hands on the Christmas Artemi Panarin. What a goal to start this game, a hell of a deke in the neutral zone. We are playing with some higher caliber players, that is for sure. That is a debut goal as well for Panarin, something I didn't make mention of. I, I mentioned it at the end of the last episode, but, the, but not this one. Easy for me to say. Uh, it's late, I'm sorry. <laughs> but any player, any debut player, any debut goal, we get a pack. That is a 7.5K pack right there. Shea Weber with the debut assist as well. Jack Johnson with the bomb. 2-0 early on here with the delayed penalty. It didn't matter. And that is a great way to start this game. You can't touch this. Terrific determination by Brody. What control? Possession seized by Atkinson. Atkinson to Louis Erickson. It's another debut goal, which is obviously likely to happen. And as I sit here, I do wonder, is it a bit too unfair? to get credit for these debut goals. I'm not sure. Patrick Hornquist, he may be on the fourth line. He is still useful. Nine shots to nothing in the first period. It's four nothing. That's a rage quit. And I, <laughs> I have had people say we should get another pack for the rage quit. Let me know what you guys think of that. If you say yes, we can retroactively, at least for that one, I think that's our second or third rage quit in this series. We wouldn't add the packs back for that. But, yeah, we could have the rage quit pack for that. We have at least two. It was Jack Johnson. I honestly cannot remember if Jack Johnson just had a debut goal there. So we are going to check. So potentially three... Seven and a half K packs coming here. And that was a debut goal as well for Jack Johnson. So that is three seven and a half K packs, potentially four, 
if we were to have the rule about the rage quit pack but again let me know for sure i won't do that in this episode i want to know from you guys and here i'll even attach a poll you can click in the top right hand corner right now vote in the poll should we get a pack every time we get a rage quit all right guys so here we go and we have a little bit of a tough decision because there is the outdoors pack that is available for 25k we're just a little bit short of being able to afford that based on the seven and a half k packs but we do have the coins for it so we could go one outdoors pack or we could go with the three seven and a half k packs 30 items if we get it but you know what it is my series is it not we're gonna go with the one outdoors pack and we will hope for the best so let's do this and let's hope that we get something good here let's go for it and we still of course have one more game to go in this episode so let's find out first up we get adam larson who is a right-handed defenseman thank you hockey gods we needed that adam larson is here we get brian fiddler which is a shame because he is a duplicate we get troy brower who i don't expect will fit into the lineup, but we can, of course, sell him. Colton Skivier, same thing. We get Cam Talbot, who does have team wheels, so he'll actually be good to have, at least for a backup goalie. We get a duplicate Patrick Hornquist that we can sell, a Germany logo. Nicholas Cronwall, not a bad ad either for a left-handed defenseman. We would have to risk losing a defensively responsible on Bork to put him into the lineup. We get Zach Delpe and a contract so overall not too bad what would have paid off better the three packs or this one 25k pack i am not sure but we do get cronwall and adam larson and potentially cam talbot who could also make an impact on this team our lineup is set for game number two no changes offensively but defensively it is looking much better we're taking the risk. We're not going to have defensively responsible on for Bork, but he is still with Weber. Jack Johnson is now with Nicholas Cronwall, and Eunice Brodeen is with Adam Larson. So Oli Mata and Yoki Paka are both out of the lineup. Of course, we're going to work on selling whoever we can, and Cam Talbot is also the backup goalie. I should mention we still don't have Team Wheels active, though. I think we are two away, and we are... No, we're four away. Four away from that, so it'll take a little bit of work but let's get into it game two the last of the episode can we keep this good start going thing on the scoreboard has changed still a pair of zeros pass attempt to nieto he's in strong wrist shot and he gets the opening goal we've had some big chances early on in this uh in this game i didn't want to say too much because it was mostly me observing the fact that he has a pretty basic team. As example, Nieto gets the goal and Ben Sherratt the assist. I think that bounced right in off of Eunice Brodeen. I am not entirely sure. I am not impressed with Matt jo or frickin Martin Jones, though. And Cam Atkinson off the expired penalty off the expired power play who needs a power play when you have cam atkinson all these changes to the lineup doesn't matter because we have who i consider the mvp the ace of this series thus far and he gets another goal austin matthews the chance and he's denied eddie lack went to the Anders Nilsson School of Goaltending. And Travis Konechny, that is why we have kept him in the lineup. Yeah, his defensive category is a bit rough, but the speed and the hands, he's one if not, is he the only original left on the team? I don't even know, it's changed that much. But unless we get a big impact center, I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon. He turns it right over to Travis Konechny. And with that speed, you're not catching him 
with Jared Tenorti. I feel awful for him. I am fairly certain that was meant to be a point uh, pass back down from the point. We'll take advantage, and Travis Konechny gets his second of the game. And we get the power play goal, the tip in front from Austin Matthews, and it is 4-1. Nicholas Cronwall gets on the board. It is 5-1. Again, I'm not going to sit here and hype it up. Cronwall with his first goal for the team. And Mike Richards, a relentless power play. It is 6-1. And that's the game, guys. 6-1 final, six straight goals. Again, I said it during the second intermission. Not going to hype that one up too much. Clearly a better player with a better team. I will say, though, props to him for staying. If you were to say, hey, you could have one player on your EASHL team, I'd take the second guy. You know, he wasn't as good of a player as my first opponent, didn't have as good of a team, but someone who was willing to stay through that 45 shots to three, one shot in the last 40 minutes. Someone who was willing to stay through that is my goddamn hero. But guys, that does it for this episode. And I will say this, the, the debut goals. Now, this episode in general was weird. You know, we knew that we had the good players coming, you know, from the Christmas set. We knew that. And that was the point, you know, originally when I had asked you guys, hey, do we want to do the Christmas set of, you guys said yes, and we knew that this is the impact that it would have on the team. And then of course you factor in how we get packs from winning divisions. If Ray Bork scores, which he hasn't in a while, even though we have him in a good spot on the power play, then you factor in debut goals, which again was kind of cheesy for the first game in this episode because of how many new players that we had. And in a way, I'm glad that first guy quit because there's a chance that we could have had even more debut goals. That's going to be more of a rarity as we continue on through this series because it's going to be more and more difficult for us to get players that will actually go in to our lineup unless we, you know, make a rule about, oh, if you get someone in a pack, you have to play them, which again, that is something that we could do. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. And then, of course, the idea of getting a pack every time someone rage quits, which again, who knows how frequently that will happen. And of course, I already asked you what you think we should do there. That as I, uh, Jesus, you know what? No, I'm leaving that in. That, as I said, will be the end of this episode. Keep in mind, we will be selling some players. So that coin total will be a little bit better. I would say don't expect over, you know, we'll go on the safe side. 14K is probably going to be our limit. And again, it might be a little bit difficult to buy someone that will be considered an improvement. We could use another right-handed defenseman, so we could take out Brodeen or Jack Johnson and just put Cronwall back over on the left-hand side. Goaltending, Martin Jones, only an 86. Not too impressed with him so far. Or, of course, we could look for a coach that would make a little bit more sense for this team. A coach with cycle game right now, for example, would be ideal, and I'm pretty sure Jimmy Howard has cycle game, so that's really at four out of six. Just a thought, though, of course, it is up to you. Make sure to like each other's comments, because the comment with the most thumbs up is what we will do. Until then, guys, I hope you did enjoy. Speaking of thumbs up, of course, give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like if you haven't already, and subscribe as well to continue following this series and others. I thank you guys for the support on this series and, of course, my other series. It's been Amazing as of late, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Bork's Battalion.